What actor actress was completely 100% wrong for the role? Joel McHale as Roy in the ill-fated as remake of the It Crowd. We want a scruffy and misanthropic It Nerd. So let's get an actor known for charisma and confidence. Okay. My favorite thing about it was that they couldn't recast Moss so they just kept Richard A. Ode. It's literally just Moss moved to America and living the same life as he did in the UK show. Cats. I got real tired of Rebel Wilson real quick in that. And James Corden. Well. Pretty much the whole thing. John Voight as a snake hunter in Anaconda is fine. But him as a Paraguayan snake hunter. Just. Why lol. Edit. Holy guacamole. I just got back to my computer and this blew up. Who knew my most upvoted comment would be about John Voight in Anaconda? Never change. Reddit. Thank you for the awards internet strangers. Because he learned his accent from his maid. Who was probably not even from Paraguay. Fun movie. But he was ridiculous in it. Two that come to mind but when cast were in Lord of the Rings. Sean Connery was offered the role of Gandalf but turned it down because he couldn't understand the script. Could you imagine how bad of a casting decision that would have been now that we've seen Sir Ian McKellen in the role? Or Nicolas Cage as Aragorn? Edit, I've offended some people who find it heretical that I said Nicolas Cage shouldn't play Aragorn. I'm entitled to my opinion and I stand by it. The thought of Sean Connery struggling to understand WTF or Hobbit is. And why there are dwarfs and elves running around is comedy gold. Sounds like a SNL skit. Any film with 30 year olds playing teens. I was so confused by Greece growing up. Why are these people that look the same age as my mom at school? John Wayne as Genghis Khan, the Conqueror. That is just wrong on so many levels. I don't know where to start. Hello Tartar woman. I am Timogen. Pilgrim. Is it now the time to talk about Toffer Grace as Eddie Brock Venom? Came in here just to say this. Who in the ever-loving fuck decided it would be a good idea to cast Eric Foreman as Venom? Mr. Ed. The role required a horse that could talk. The horse they hired couldn't talk so they had to double his lines. Shows how far you can get when you're shagging the producer. Colin Farrell as Alexander the Great. As one of my old university professors once said. I wouldn't follow that guy to the end of my driveway. You can't talk about Oliver Stone's Alexander without mentioning that the madman has four different director's cuts of the film. Mickey Rooney as Mr. Uniyoshi. I think I remember that film. Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Remember that Bond movie where Denise Richards plays a nuclear physicist? Doctor. Christmas Jones, and no jokes. I don't know any doctor jokes. Why the fuck was Jesse Eisenberg cast as Lex Luthor of all fucking things? All depictions of him are of a tall, bald, and lean businessman. No disrespect for the actor. I'd take such a high paying job too. But whoever thought of casting him is a clown. Me watching previews, Jim Halpert for Jack Ryan. Me after watching it, ah shit he rocked it. His appearance gave a lot of credence to the line. I'm just an analyst. Cameron Diaz was horrible in the 2014 Annie remake. She hasn't made a movie since. To be fair, anyone would look terrible in comparison to Carol Burnett's Miss Hannigan. Every actress cast as Sue Richards. The Invisible Woman. From the Fantastic Four so far. The problem there is always trying to make the F4 into action movie protagonists. When they really aren't. You really need something like a scientific based disaster movie for them to really shine. Ferdy Ashore as Artemis Fowl. He conveys none of the intelligence, shrewdness or relentless determination of the book character. He comes across as a child dressed up in a suit and handed cue cards with smart sounding lines to read unconvincingly. He's a child so I'm going to lay the blame for that one on the casting director. Now that was the movie creators Disney deciding the book wasn't safe enough. They completely butchered the character. From the first scene to the last. They butchered the rest of the movie too. Changed the story completely and then didn't want to spend the money to reshoot it and make it coherent at all. His last line in the movie I'm Artemis Fowl. And I'm a criminal mastermind. Was so absolutely ridiculous because he just wasn't. He was in the book though. Maybe an unpopular opinion. But Sophie Turner as Jean Grey. I like her as an actress. But I just couldn't get into it. I felt like she struggled with hiding her accent. 
Kristen Stewart as Snow White and Snow White and the Huntsman. Terrible. That stood out to me too. Stewart has kind of a brooding aura of some sort. I get why she was cast in Twilight. But Snow White is someone who is the complete opposite of that. I don't think it's just my bias due to her starting out in Twilight either. I imagine they put her in the role because the target audience for the film is the Twilight demographic. But it's seeing her as Snow White was kind of jarring. I will take a look in the future and say Mark Wahlberg as Sully in the Uncharted movie. Sully is Bruce Campbell. He's got the look already. And his style would fit the character perfectly. Look at Sam Axe in Burn Notice. Cameron Diaz in Gangs of New York. It's the only time I've really be pulled out of a move because the casting didn't seem right. That was def a studio decision. Pretty sure Marty wanted someone else. Jaden Smith in anything. Luckily. I believe they've given up on it. He was pretty good in the pursuit of happiness. I DK their names. But the main protagonists in the live action remake of Dragon Ball and also the one in The Last Airbender. What's crazy to me is how these movies still were able to make a profit. The abysmal casting is barely noticeable when literally everything else about these movies also sucks. Everyone in The Last Airbender movie. Especially considering the fact that they took the waterbenders, canonically the nation with the darkest skin coloring, and made all of them white. Then made the firebenders dark skinned. If I recall correctly they cast it on based on a martial arts demonstration video he submitted. Not on acting prowess. You can get creative with VFX to make a fight look better. But you can't make an actor act better. Steven Seagal is a person who can kick ass. Steven Seagal is a person in general. Movie hasn't even come out yet but Kevin Hart is playing Roland in the new Borderlands movie and I can already tell. You're right now. It's gonna be a terrible fucking time. Edit, I'm very glad to see people agree that Kevin Hart and whoever is making this movie can get fucked. I love the games but I am not watching that shit. Has anyone said Amelia Clark as Sarah Connor yet? Also Jay Courtney as Carl Reese. Actually the whole movie Son Arnold was cast fucking horribly. Cersei Lannister was a better Sarah Connor than Daenerys Targaryen. Gwyneth Paltrow. John Dorian as Doctor. Acula. He is way too hammy. And not very threatening for a vampire who is behind loads of mysterious deaths in the hospital. He clearly only got the part because he wrote the dumb script for it. It was also a very racist filming process where multiple times Chris Turk was told to act blacker. In good conscience I can't support the film. A great ending for the movie though. I mean it's really impressive when the name Doctor. Acura comes on screen and they remove the dot. Squeeze the words together and reveal Dracula. Simply amazing. Anabeth in the Percy Jackson movie. The main physical feature was supposed to be the blonde hair. And they somehow messed up on that. Oh yeah and then in the terrible attempt at a sequel. They cast Clarice, a canonically basketball player height. Bodybuilder muscular war machine, as a small. Cute blonde girl. I feel so terrible for Ridden. Who claims to hate the movies? I'm glad he's getting his own TV show with creative control. Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker in Dracula, 1992. He's charming and pretty. But he shouldn't have been in this cast against such titans as Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins. And the English accent was atrocious. In over his head. It's like Jennifer Lopez trying to sing a Celine Dion song. Shout out Tom Waits. Bug eating prisoner. Pretty much everyone from the Percy Jackson movies. John Malkovich in being John Malkovich. It just seemed a bit too on the nose. That wasn't John Malkovich. It was John Cusack in John Malkovich's body. Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher. If you've read the book he is the exact physical opposite of the character as written. I haven't read the book and I enjoyed the movies. Ignorance is bliss. Dane DeHaan, Valerian. That move is pretty awesome except for him. It felt entirely miscast and I couldn't believe this guy was the kind of character they were making him out to be. I'd say both him and Cara Delevingne. They had absolutely no chemistry together. Did you guys forgot Ben Affleck and Daredevil? I tried to. John Wayne as a Native American or Anthony Hopkins as a black man come to mind. John Wayne as Genghis Khan in The Conqueror might be the worst casting in world history. He doesn't even try to hide his accent. You keep expecting him to say partner every 15 seconds. 
Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson in the Fifty Shades trilogy. Aside from the movies being absolutely shitty, the two had no chemistry with each other and it was awkward as hell to watch. More so when I found out that Jamie was married while filming those movies. The movies shouldn't have even been made. I firmly believe that Twilight fanfic typed poorly on a Blackberry should not be made into a movie. Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher. Reach is supposed to be 6 plus feet tall. 240 plus pounds. Basically a brick shithouse of a man. And someone pulling the string said yeah. That totally sounds like Tom Cruise to me. And someone pulling the string said yeah. That totally sounds like Tom Cruise to me. Guess who that someone is? Comma https colon slash slash www. Digital spe. Com movies at 22,049 slash cruise to produce Lee Child adaptation. Chloe Grace Moritz in the Carrie remake. Agree. Sissy Spacek had the perfect unconventional vulnerable weirdo vibe for the original Carrie. You expect me to believe that Chloe Grace Moritz, who looks like one of the mean girl cheerleaders, is a social outcast? Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. Not because of the whole situation around it, but after reading the books and the cameos in Potter, I just don't see him as Grindelwald. Just as Albino Depp. Colin Farrell was much better. Kevin Hart as Roland in the upcoming Borderlands movie. Everyone who knows anything about Borderlands will agree with me. Terry Crews should be playing Roland. He's big. Has comedic chops. And can play the no-nonsense straight shooter badass when everything else is wild. Terry Crews should be playing Mr. Torg. Bro. Jared Leto as the Joker. Felt too trahed. We live in a society. The male and female leads in Valyrian. They both ruined what could have been, at least, a half-acid decent movie. I felt more so the male led. I loved so much about the film visual and story-wise and it fell so flat due to zero chemistry between the leads. It could have achieved fifth element cult classic and sadly was quickly forgotten. Cameron Diaz in Gangs of New York. Almost any other actress would have been a better choice. This. Cameron Diaz opposite Daniel Day-Lewis and Leonardo DiCaprio in a period drama. What on earth were they thinking? Meryl Streep as whomever that was in Mary Poppins Returns. That whole scene was atrocious. Supercalifragilisticexpial atrocious. Shola Berth in Crystal Skull. That part should have been short round as an adult. I was just thinking this the other day. Indy abandons short round in an orphanage sometime after Temple of Doom for his own good. Short Round grows up resenting Indy and longing for adventure. Hearing Indy's hung up whip, he decides to adopt his persona and leverage Indy's name to make his fortune. Indy gets wind someone is going around impersonating him and comes out of retirement. Obviously ends with Short Round and Indy teaming up and Indy giving his former protege his blessing to carry on his name, the kid having never known his own birth name. Q New Trilogy Everybody in Gods of Egypt Edit, this doesn't mean I hate the movie. It's a fun time but laughably cast. I love ridiculous action movies and it all started with True Lies. To this day I'm convinced that was a script that was put together to compete with Clash of the Titans and Immortals, 2010 and 2011, but somehow didn't end up getting made until years later. Mila Kunis the Great and Powerful Oz. I love Sam Raimi and she is a decent actress but she didn't have enough to pull off the role. They also didn't hide how small she is so she never filled the role for me. That movie was an abomination. There's a shit ton of Oz lore and interesting backstory from the many books in the series. They tossed all that and made the story two girls fight over a guy and one gets really bitter about it. Frank Baum was a feminist who never would have written that dog shit. Jafar in the new Aladdin. He wasn't believable menacing and way too young. Plus for much of his screen time he's standing next to Nadib Nagaban. Who would have been a much better choice? He was way too hot to be Jafar. Eric Foreman, Venom. Schwarzenegger in Twins. He looks nothing like Danny DeVito. Hey. It's not easy to find someone that sexy. Schwarzenegger did his best. Okay. Anthony Mackie as Takeshi Kovach in Altered Carbon S2. Granted. S2 had serious killing problems that went way beyond casting but yet. Missed the mark entirely. I mostly dislike the casting of him and some of the cheese at the end mostly all of the quell parts and the direction they took her character. But I wouldn't call it unfixable. What all was there bad for you? 
and I wonder how much of his casting wasn't bad so much as Joel Kinnaman was so freaking perfect that nothing can live up to it. The actress who played Jean Grey in the new X-Men movies, she couldn't carry the role at all and it really dulled the Dark Phoenix storyline. It's a damn shame because they had Jessica Chastain in the movie and she would have been excellent cast as Grey Phoenix. I would say Jennifer Lawrence in Joy. She was about 10 years too young for the role for most of the scenes in the film. It would have been a perfect opportunity to throw some decent work the way of an older actress. Judy Dench in Cats. Oy vey. Both Lily James and Army Hammer in the Rebecca remake. She's way too confident to be the narrator and he's way too smarmy to be the winter. And I thought that before all the creepy stuff about him came out, now it's even worse to try to watch. Just wanted to say for anyone doubting future casting. Look at Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. When that was announced so many fans were up in arms and now he is Iron Man. On top of that, I'm pretty sure they've changed Iron Man's character in pretty much all non-film media to match RDJ's charisma and style. When you portray a character so iconically that the character is rewritten, you know you did a good job. Julia Roberts as the evil queen in Mirror Mirror. I just can't hate her. Snow was perfect in that one though. Shia LaBeouf is the successor character that was built up to pick up the torch replace Indiana Jones in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I don't dislike him at as an actor, he was great in Disturbia but he was not convincing in that role. And had no chance to fill Harrison Ford shoes. Vince Vaughn in the 1998 remake of Psycho. That man's baby face cannot be threatening if he was pointing a gun at me. Channing Taters in that movie where he was supposed to be a Roman dude. Taters XD. Nicole Kidman is cast as Lucy in Aaron Sorkin's Lucille Ball movie. She can't move her face anymore. And I like Nicole Kidman. She's done some great stuff lately but this doesn't make sense. Are there any other actresses in Hollywood? Why is it always the same PPL? Did she redo Bewitched? This might be less obvious but I hate Dwayne Johnson's portrayal of Hercules. He has the perfect body for it yes but it doesn't mean he embodies the character. I have the perfect body to play Lemony Snicket but doesn't mean I should. Ryan Reynolds as Hal Jordan. He would have been more believable as Kyle Rayner than Hal Jordan. He was regularly thrown around to play Wally West as The Flash. They took a big, ish popular actor and throw him at a role without any consideration that his personality matched the character. Everything that makes Reynolds perfect as Deadpool makes him wrong as Hal Jordan. When Star Trek Voyager started filming in 1994 Genevieve Bujold was originally chosen for the part of Captain Catherine Janeway but quit after the first episode. There's still footage of Genevieve's episode and it didn't feel right. Kate Mulgrew took the part and did a fantastic job with it. It was definitely miscast to start off but thankfully left and Kate Mulgrew did a much better job. For those interested, here's a video, https colon slash slash, yautu. BSBL 3 CGQ 5 VXI. One of the comments just sum it up. Kate Mulgrew gave it the right energy.